So today's video, we're going to talk about, we're going to make the connection between this original workflow that we had planned out for Cray IQ and how it matches up with the code that we wrote in order to run this Cray I project. Now, if you watched the first video, you saw where I first explained the plan that I had laid out for the way that I wanted this crew to function. Now, in the previous video, I give you the final code of this project. Again, the link is going to be in the description. Completely easy to run, completely free for you to use. All you need is your API keys for OpenAI and your serper.dev tool. But again, this doesn't require any installation. But what I do want to emphasize in this video is showing you the connection between how the crew behaves based on this plan, this diagram that I drew out and how the code actually, how the code can actually be edited, changed. And just so you can see how the code interacts with the different files in the project so that you can also just be able to edit them for yourself, make any changes that you want, even if you don't have any programming experience. Now, in these videos is that I don't have the expectation that if you're watching this, that you're a professional, that you're a developer, or that you have any, any kind of programming or, you know, machine learning experience. I try my best to make this as easy to understand, as simple to explain, so that you can get benefit out of these new and upcoming AI tools. So we're going to go ahead and get started. At the original diagram that I had set out, the first thing that we talked about was that we wanted to set up a crew that could help me basically figure out a way to minimize my time editing. So the way we did this is we created four multiple agents. We created a business solutions analyst. We had a professional video editor. We had a hiring manager. And last, we had a project manager. Originally, we were going to set a manager to oversee all these agents, but I ended up just doing a sequential process for this crew. And all that means is that this first agent figures out their problem then they pass on their solution to the second agent then they pass it on to the next one and finally the project manager so we can kind of just forget about this for now but yeah that's going to be the process and just to showcase that workflow that's what i have these black arrows right here just mean this one figures it out pass it on to the next pass it on to the next pass it on last so all these other colorful arrows you see here all this implies is that whatever solution was figured out by the task that the business solution analyst was in charge of so they really just had to make the problem a little more clear for everybody else whatever they found out they passed on to the video editor and then also the original solution that the business analyst found out they were gonna also pass it in to or rather that was going to be available to the hiring manager and also the project manager and again i'll show you in the code how that was emphasized same thing for the same thing for the video editor if the video editor figures something out or whatever the solution ended up being for the video editor, they were going to make that available to the hiring manager and to the project manager. That's what this pink arrow represents. Now, the hiring manager is the one that takes the information from the business analyst and from the video editor. They then start making the job postings and whatever result they end up coming up with, they also pass that on to the project manager. And as you can see here, the last element or rather the last agent at the end of this crew or rather this crew project ends up being a project manager that takes in the information from the business analyst, from the video editor and from the hiring manager. And from there, they basically give me a clear cut plan on how I can get an editor within the next 14 days. So that's again, just a quick overview of this original diagram that I had explained in the first video, just to give you a re recap. But again, I want to show you how this connects with the actual code that's written out. So the first thing we want to go over is these blue boxes that you see right here. That's just our agents. Now, those have to be defined within our code, obviously. And here in your project, as you can see here, we have this folder right here called Korea Hiring Video Editor. When you open up or expand this folder, you're going to see these Python files. So we're going to go ahead and click the agents one, and that takes you to the code. So if we look at line 18 right here. We see this is the business analyst. Now, I don't want you to worry about the nuances like uh, dev, self, or anything. We're not here to talk about syntax. We're here to talk about how this project is laid out in Python. So for this business analyst, like I mentioned before on this chart, this is where the behavior of this agent is written out. So the role, that's just the title of your agent the goal what your agent is supposed to do and the part where i try to emphasize the most detail is the backstory so this is basically kind of like the prompt that is written out for how your agent is supposed to behave and as you can see just like for the business analyst 
here we have the video editor and again you have the same pattern of role goal and backstory and again i try to be as detailed as i could with the backstory based on the output that i wanted you will see that pattern in this agents that pi file that repeats for all of the agents again talent recruit right here so we already went over business analyst professional video editor and well i call it talent recruiter there but that's what hiring manager means here and again they all see you start to see that pattern within this code right that these are all agents they all have a role they all have a goal they all have a backstory that is very clearly defined and then we have some settings under each one of those descriptions which we'll talk about in a little bit but the only thing i want to make clear to you right now is that if you want to change anything in these agents even if you don't necessarily want to mess with these names but anything that you see in these red letters that's just text for the large language model that you're using whether it's chat gpt or some other some other model that you might be using you can pretty much change this definition here to make the agent do whatever you want it to do this project can serve for you as a template for really whatever you want as long as you keep it with basically four agents so the other things they can change within this agents.py file here we see this verbose all this all this changes is the output that you see from crew ai so you can leave that at true or false it's up to you that won't really change much allow did allow delegation so what this setting does which can be set to true or false is whether you want this agent to let's say for whatever reason they're not able to find a solution to the problem you task them with if this is set to true they have the ability to basically ask somebody else in the team to try to help them figure out that problem now i set it to false for mine because i wanted basically a streamlined process where this one does one thing finishes it moves on to the next moves on to the next moves on to the next so i left these as false but if you want to try different results you can set that to true the setting right here that says tools basically this is what enables you to use the tools that i talked in the previous video the first tool is serper dev tool this is a tool that allows crew ai to do google searches the other tool is website search tool so once it does those website searches through google it can actually scrape these websites or analyze them with this tool and then the last one is youtube channel search tool which allows it to i mean what the title implies lets it search through youtube for videos so whatever tool you want this specific agent to have access to in this case the business analyst here in the tools all you would have to write would be the name of the tool the way the name of the tool is used here, it's just gonna be their self.serper. As you can see here, it says self.serper equals serper dev tool. So that's just saying this, this name right here represents the serper tool. Same thing for the website search tool that's represented by the variable name self.web. Same thing for the YouTube channel tool that's represented by, by the title, by the name self.youtube. Again, in Python or whatever programming language, these are called variables, but just for the sake of it, we're just, you know, I'm trying to explain that as easy as I can without getting too technical. And if you want to list more of these, and let's say you get a little mixed up with the syntax or you're, let's say you're scared, you'll mess it up. If you make any mistakes and your code doesn't run and you can't click undo anymore, all you have to do is, again, the link that I have in the description, you can just click that again, make another copy of it, and you'll be good to go. So as you can see here, for this particular business analyst, they only have access for the self T, which represents the YouTube tool. And then as you can see, these other ones, like the video editor, it has access to self.serper and self.web. So this one can actually do Google searches and search the web. So as, as I was mentioning before, this agents file really is just dedicated to showing how the agents behave, how they're gonna interact with each other, and also what tools they have access to. So you can come in here, you can look at these agents the way I have them set up by default on this project, and you can tweak anything you want to make this project work for you however you want to work for you. So that covers pretty much how the agents behave within the code for the project that we have on this template. So now we're gonna talk about the tasks because that's the other part that's crucial to a crew AI project. You have your agents and your tasks. So here we're gonna look at our task.py file right here. So tasks refers to what is an agent actually gonna do? An agent has a purpose and has a certain behavior, you know, based on what we on what we defined it, what we called it, the goal it has, and its backstory. I like to think of the backstory more as its resume, its experience, right? So that's the agent, that's its role, that's how it's defined. 
but the task basically is what gives the agent a purpose. So what do you want this agent to actually do? So here we see this business analysis task and what this is basically saying right here is this is defining what the task it's going to be. And just looking at this part where you see dev business analysis task, ignoring this and scrolling down, you can see here that there's another task called video editor task. You keep going down. There's another one called recruitment task. And again, all the way to the end, you see this one called project management task. Now, I know you see all these red letters. It seems like there's a lot of writing, but similar to the agents, I spent a lot of I try to include a lot of detail in regards to what I wanted to the expected outcome to be for these tasks. So each task has an agent, right? You don't see that this clearly here, but whatever task you do needs an agent in order to perform the task that you're giving it for the business task. We're going to give it the business analyst task and also it needs a description of what the task is going to be. Now, things like the description. They're just going to be written however you want it to be. Again, this is written in plain English, these red letters. Again, those are the directions that you're giving to the large language model and the expected output. Basically that I wanted a report that defines all the problems that, you know, with the context that was provided to the agent. And that's kind of a short description that I have here. But then as you can see here, I provide a sample report. And this is really just a list of the criteria that I want the bit, the business analyst to return with once they're done. So that's what this really long description is, right? You can see the categories here. You see scope, you see step-by-step -step breakdown, you see time expenditure, data collection. Again, this is just because I wanted a very thorough analysis. So that's why you have this long description, but you can make it sure we want. It doesn't have to be this detailed, but if you've seen, if you've seen or watched other videos from other people making these kind of projects, you'll notice that pattern that the more clear and the more useful the information and or the end product of these crew AI tasks are is really dependent on how well, how detailed you are about how you define the task output. Same thing for video editor. As we talked about, you have the agent that you're going to give it. You have this description and then you have the expected output. This line right here that says context. That's just extra information that you're giving the agent to in order for them to better understand what they're doing. And again, we see this pattern again for recruitment task. And, you know, again, for the last one, the project management task, right? They have an agent, they have context, they have a description, and they have a very intricate, very detailed expectation for what the expected output or the end result is going to be. So again, as we scroll down here, I don't want you to get too caught up with a lot of what's written out here, but the more important thing here is going to be this part that says splicing the tasks with their respective agents. So here we're creating a task called a BSA task. So as you can see here, let's read through this line real quick and let's just kind of analyze what stands out to us. So we see here where it says business underscore analyst task. So we've seen that before, right? We talked about it in a previous file that we were inspecting that was actually in our task.py written exactly like that, right? So let's go here just to kind of compare. So here in the business analysis task function, which is in our task.py file, we see that after the name of it, we have this parentheses and these three words in it, one called self, one called agent, and then one called inputs, right? So the cell phone, we don't really have to worry about, but the important things here is the one that says agent and inputs. So for this analysis task, this business analysis task function, it requires to have an agent and it requires some inputs in order for it to run the way it's expected to run. So again, we go back to our main.py file one more time. And again, what we see here when our task is being created, again, we see business analysis task. We see that it takes a business analyst, that's the agent, and then we see that it takes inputs. So all inputs is, is basically the details that I gave the crew regarding the problems that I was having with, you know, the, the tasks that I needed help with, you know, in terms of, and you can see that down here um, in the main section of our main.py file, I have inputs, and then here I just have a, a description of what I wrote out to be the problem that I'm having with, you know, editing, spending too much doing that. So again, these inputs which were written out are what's given to the business analysis task in order for it to perform the task properly, also along with the business analyst. And as you can see at here, we see that same pattern with the editor task. The video editor task also takes an agent 
and it's also going to take i believe it was context mm -hmm. so let's look at that real quick in the task.py file so if we scroll down to our task we have our video editor task and in our video editor task we also see that it needs an agent and needs context. So in Query AI, all context is, is basically information, extra information that you can provide to your agent for your task in order for it to you know, conduct its function properly for whatever problem you're trying to solve. So in the case of the in the case of this task in particular, which is the video editor task, we want this task to be performed by the video editor agent and we want to have context from the BSA task. Because remember, the BSA task, they had their own thing they needed to do. They had their own analysis they needed to complete. And once they finished that analysis, we wanted the business analyst to be able to give that information to the video editor, as we saw with this orange arrow. So the way that's done, the way that information is transferred from the business analyst to the video editor is through this context field. And I mean, this is a Python thing, but basically it expects it with these brackets and then the name of the task that it was finished previously. And again, you can see that in the code in the tasks.py file, we see our video editor task and then we have it expects it needs to have context and again this matches up with what we just talked about which i do want to repeat myself just to make sure you're able to see this clearly i know i might be going through a little bit fast but again through context is how we're able to pass out information solutions from one agent to another so looking at this guide right here remember now we had the video editor that had the video editing task and when they finish that they were going to pass their information or their context to the hiring manager so let's look at that in the code and we see that really clearly here we see the video editor task takes the video editor agent and it passes on the bsa task as we spoke through that earlier and just to you know now that you're starting to see that pattern we could see here that the hiring manager agent is performing basically the hiring recruiter town recruiter task in this task like i said it needs an agent but it also it's expecting context from other agents in this case it's expecting context from the video editing task and it's expecting context from the bsa or the business systems analyst and we can see that here in the code we see the recruitment task uses the talent recruiter agent and here i think i just have it set from yeah here i just said to get the editor task so it's only getting the outcome of whatever the video editor gave it but also with these brackets that you see here in python all it means is that this is a list so you could very easily just add a comma and we could also add bsa task and again this is how you edit out your project if you want to give it context from other agents or from other tasks that were completed so last but not least we see here after the hiring manager is done it passes it on to the project manager in this project manager it's expecting to get context from all three agents after the hiring manager has finished their task and again we go back to the main.py file we see here the project management task we see that the agent is the project manager and again like i was telling you in python the way you write out lists is with those brackets you can see here that for context it's giving it the bsa task the completed editor task and the recruiter task and the main purpose for that was so that the project manager could make a decision could make a plan after the other three agents did all the research for them and again if you want to get a little bit of a clear picture on that we can go to our task.py here at the bottom we have the project management task and again it needed an agent and it needed context and then if we look at the project manager agent in our agents.py file here at the bottom we see here that the whole point of the project manager is to make a concise a clear 14 day plan with the information that was given to them from the other agents. And if you take one more look at the main.py file, basically when you set up your crew here, you could see the order of all the agents, or rather you can see the order of all the tasks. And because we set our processing to process sequential, each of these tasks is gonna be done one after the other, the other after the other. So each task has to finish in order for the next one to perform which makes sense because when we're providing context from one task to the other, sometimes we are expecting results from some of the previous tasks.
So that's going to be it for the video for today. It went a little longer than I expected. But again, because you now have access to this project, which is a fully working Cray AI project, I wanted you to feel like you had the ability to go in here, edit it, change the definitions of the agents so you can actually start using it for in order to test whatever you want with Cray AI, any ideas that you might have for your business or for your hobbies. So you could start playing with this because again, We've all had that ChatGPT moment where we thought ChatGPT was the next biggest thing because we're talking to an AI. Crew AI is the next biggest thing, I, I think, in my opinion, because now you can actually get AI to basically talk to other AI agents to solve problems. Now, I know this kind of setup, I know going through these kind of installations, sometimes it seems tedious, sometimes it seems a little bit frustrating, but again, I try my best to make sure that if you're interested in AI, you're getting an introduction that is you know, has a low barrier of entry, has a very easy to use, user-friendly explanation that you can understand, even if you don't have a technical background. So with this explanation, I know we talked about Python code without really talking about Python syntax. But again, the goal here was for you to be able to look at these files, look at this project, and be able to change things in it confidently so that you could still have a working file but more attuned to you being able to use these crews or these crew agents to whatever you wanted. If you really like to understand the syntax better, you can always just basically copy and paste this code on ChatGPT and ask it to explain to you line by line so you can have a clear understanding. Now, regardless of how expert you are in Python or not, there's still gonna be problems you run into. You're gonna get errors when you run this project and again, I mean, I had a lot of errors when I was working through this project and believe me, I did a lot of copy pasting onto ChatGPT. But again, that helps just for you to get through that process through so you can keep using these tools, keep learning faster. And again, stay on top of what the next biggest thing is going to be. I'd really like to hear what you're using Cray AI for in your business or in your life or what you think the next biggest thing in AI is. So definitely leave that in the comments. I thank you for watching and I hope you have a I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.